Hello everyone, and welcome back to Val's Math Problems. Today's problem is an average rate of change problem involving a sinusoidal graph. So let's read it together. The population of black flies at a lake in northern Ontario can be modeled by the function p of t equals 23.7 cos of pi over 6 t minus 7 plus 24.1 where P is in millions and T is in months. Over which time interval is the average rate of change in the black fly population the greatest? A, from zero to four months, B, from one month to seven months, C, from seven months to 16 months, and D, from 10 months to 18 months. So this problem is asking us between which intervals, yep, which interval, will there be a greatest, a, where the average rate of change will be the greatest, meaning the slope connecting these coordinates, which one will be the greatest, okay? So have which one will have the steepest slope, okay? Because this is a sinusoidal graph, we will have to draw a secant line, okay, which will connect our two points. So to solve our graph, we are going to have to, first of all, graph the function. We're going to label our average rate of changes and then we are going to solve for each interval to prove our answers. So here I have graphed our, our, I have graphed our function, okay? And I have labeled the average rate, or sorry, the intervals. Um, our first interval was zero, all right, right here, zero on our x-axis, all the way to four months. What you wanna do is go along your x-axis and find these numbers, starting at zero, Okay, and I'm going all the way to four months. Coming up here, these are going to be my points, okay? So you see that blue line is our A, our first rate of change, okay? B is asking from one month, okay? So I see one month is right here, all the way until seven months, okay? Seven months all the way up there. So I know where my orange line is, that is my B, okay? I'll just label it for you, A, B, wonderful. C is going to be from seven months. All right, we already have a point there. Till 16 months. Here's 16, I'll draw a line right up. Here we go. That's C. And D is going to be from 10 months all the way until 18 months, right here. Okay, so what we are, what they're asking us is which one has the greatest slope. So if we look here, oops, right away that we can see that C actually has a decreasing slope, it's gonna be negative. So right away we know that C is not going to have the greatest rate of change, okay? Now if we look at D, we can see that D is definitely not as steep as A or B, okay? So D, you see it like that, B is like that. There's a big difference between these two, okay? So we know that D is probably not going to be our greatest rate of change, unless, of course, I have graphed it wrong, okay, which I have not. Um, and here we have it between A and B. So A is like this, B slightly tilts. If you can see the difference in steepness here, or slope, Okay, we can see that B is actually a bit steeper. So just from the graph, we can probably conclude that B will have the greatest rate of change, but of course we do need to calculate this to be certain, to be certain. Um, some of you may be asking me how I did graph this. I have another um, episode on how to graph sinusoidals. You can go check that out. Um, if you are a bit confused at this moment, I will go over it quickly on how I graphed it. So here, this is my A value, this is my B value, this is my phase shift, and this is my K value. So our equation of axis right here, meaning the middle of my graph. Um, I calculated my minimum value, got a 0 0.4. Calculated my max value here, got as 47.8. Calculated my period, you can see my calculations. Okay, my period, 12 months, okay? So it goes through an entire, entire cycle, it takes 12 months, okay, an entire year. And here my phase shift is seven, and because it is a positive coast graph, I will start my max value um, at seven. Okay, so then if we take a look at my graph here, I have my max values at 
okay my minimum values down here at 0 0.4 okay if you are still confused on how to graph sinusoidals please look at my other video before continuing um, with this one so as we said before we are guessing that a or b will be the greatest rate of change so now we are going to calculate this All right so how we calculate this our interval that they've given us is from zero months to four months these are only x values and in order to calculate slope we need y values and x values here is our equation for slope okay y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 okay we need to find the y value for each of our x values okay so what we need to do is fill in our x values into our equations if you look here i filled in my x value of zero into the slots for x all right so here I'm going to calculate it again to making sure that we're calculating this properly we need to put into our calculator we need to multiply all of this first because remember bedmas we do our brackets first so pi over six times zero minus seven we need to do cos of this answer times cos of our answer times 23.7 and then add on 24.1. It is very important that we are doing this correctly or we do risk getting the wrong answer. In this case, if you are putting in pi over six into your calculator, your calculator does need to be in radians. And if you are going to put it in degrees, so pi over six in degrees is going to be 30 degrees, um, then your calculator needs to be in degrees. Make sure of that or you will get the wrong answer. So after putting into my calculator pro correctly, I get this as my y value. So this is my first coordinate. I come over to my next one because again, it is an average rate of change, meaning between two points. I need to also do my second point. Here I've done my second point, solve for my y value, and I get 24.1. Something um, a little special about this number is that it actually is equal to our equation of axis. If you look at our graph, we can see that four lands right on our equation of axis. So to make sure that you're calculating things properly, you can always refer to the graph. And if you get 24.1 for four, then you know that you've calculated it properly. Or, you know, you don't even need to calculate it at all because, um, like we said, we can refer to the graph. But of course, to be sure, we are going, I did calculate it, okay? Down here, I calculated my average rate of change, which I stated before is our slope. Slope, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1 okay so i filled in my values y2 y1 x2 x1 i get as my answer 5.1312 million per month so that means that the black fly population is increasing between this time interval by 5.1312 million black flies per month okay definitely don't want to be near that like during that time um next i'm going to calculate my b okay so b here is from one month until seven months. All right, here I have calculated one, seven. Again, if we refer to our graph, one, if we look here, one is at our very lowest point, and we know that our minimum value is at our lowest point. We know that our minimum value is at one, okay? Um, so it's going to be 0 0.4. I did calculate it just to make sure. And again, if we look over here at seven, seven is at 40 uh, sorry it's at our max value so 47.8 if we look here i calculate to be 47.8 so for a lot of these we can look to our graph then again we calculate so we can look at my calculations mm -hmm. 7.9 million per month okay now we did rule out the other two as not ha being the greatest rate of change but just to make sure i did calculate it as we predicted C did end up being a negative slope, okay? So what, like I did before, same thing for all the others. Found my Y values, okay, calculated it. Yep, it is going down. We did calculate it properly to be negative. Next, we can look at D, okay? D, like we said before, probably will not be great, greatest rate of change because, again, the slope is not as great as in those two. Okay, you can see that one's not as steep, right? And we calculated it to be, again, not as steep. So take a second, look at my calculations. All right, so we did in fact come to the conclusion that B had the greatest rate of change, 7.9 million per month. And if we look at our graph, that is what we 
estimated before because again like i said it has the greatest it has the steepest slope okay like that um, an occupation that might need to know about this might need to understand this problem or be able to graph certain things like this would be an entomologist entomologists study the life cycle behavior ecology and population of insects they also study urban pests forest pests and agricultural pests they might be hired to study insects in specific areas so maybe around farms to study populations of black flies so farmers know when to protect their animals more than other times there have been many cases of cattle horse and deer dying from swarms of black flies which put them in anaphylactic shock or taxemia which is caused by the black fly saliva so entomologists might be hired by farmers to uh, to protect their animals or tell them what times during the year maybe to protect them if we want to look at this graph um, here we can see that in about the first month so january cold black flies aren't really there but as the temperatures start to increase we see that the black flies start to come back and definitely need to be protecting our animals around our peak seasons okay so thank you very much for joining me today and i hope that you come back to see val's math problems once again have a great day